All right, in this video, I'm going over comparative statics. And in particular, I'd like to show you how um, comparative statics can help you figure out the underlying motivations behind a particular set of data. Um, so I'm gonna look at a case where the prediction is ambiguous. It's about um, the market conditions. We're in the middle of um, the pandemic. And the question is, will students, say seniors who could apply for jobs, will they increase the number of job applications they fill out or will they decrease the number of job applications they fill out? And we're gonna look at two different models that come up with two different predictions about this and think about how the underlying structure of these models tells us something different about the underlying motivations between different populations that might have um, different relationships between the market condition and the job applications. So, all right, so here's the basic model. Um, we're choosing the number of applications to fill out for jobs, and we're thinking about a senior in college, pretty much. And they're optimizing this equation, and this is generally how people will set this problem up the first time they model it. So um, there's, you're trying to optimize your objective function, which is the probability of getting a job, time uh, minus the effort um, put forth in getting jobs. And of course, the probability of getting a job depends on how many applications you submit, and also on market conditions, which is an exogenous variable. And then effort is a function of how many applications you fill out. Now, I, I came up with a summary of the two hypotheses. One is when market conditions drop, like they have during the pandemic, uh, seniors will increase their number of jobs they're applying to. That's one prediction. The other prediction is the opposite. Job uh, market conditions drop. That leads to a drop in the applications. So um, I'm going to let you predict which of these two predictions is going to be borne out by this model and why. And then we'll model it and then we'll do a different model to explain the other correlation. All right, now when we're, when we're setting up comparative statics, we're going to need to draw pictures of the graphs involved. All right, and our graphs are gonna be pretty classic. The probability of finding a job will probably be diminishing at the margin, and of course that can't be higher than 100%, so there's certainly a limit up here, um, which increases the chances that it's gonna have a classic diminishing marginal benefit shape, which it will. You can think that through on your own. And then the effort costs um, oftentimes have this increasing marginal cost uh, shape because it's easy to apply to jobs whenever you feel like applying to jobs, but the more jobs you apply to, the more you're going to have to cut into those times when you really don't feel like applying to jobs. So both of these shapes make sense. And then to really quickly go over what this looks like when we put these together, let's move over here. All right, so I've mapped these onto the same map where we have our probability of finding a job, our effort costs, and our objective function is subtracting those from each other. So this is graphing um, probability of finding a job minus effort cost. And we know that at this point, that is zero. Subtracting the two is zero. You maximize that where the bulge is biggest in the middle. And that's going to determine the optimal at job applications. And I'm labeling this old because we're going to change market conditions to make the market go downward. And we're going to see what does that do to this graph. But where this is the biggest, of course, that's where marginal benefit, the tangent of the probability of finding a job line, is equal to marginal cost. Marginal benefit is that tangent. Marginal cost is this tangent. Since margin, marginal is always just the tangent of the line, and that's going to be associated with, if I, if I drew this properly, that's going to be associated with the maximum point when we graph the difference between the two, which we're graphing down here. This, this graph is just taken as us graphing the subtraction between the two. That's optimized, of course, when the derivative of the entire function is equal to zero. So that's what we're doing when we take our first order conditions. Now, um, I'm going to put this optimal. I'm gonna move this optimal over onto those graphs. All right, so to do the comparative statics, we need to first take the first order conditions of this generic objective function, and I'll do that. So I'm taking the derivative of the payoff function, and I let pi be the payoff function representing this entire function with respect to the choice variable a. So the derivative here is just the derivative of our benefit minus the derivative of the cost. That's 
taking the derivative of the whole objective function. To find the first order condition, we're setting that equal to zero. And we can label this, this is the marginal benefit, and this is the marginal cost. And of course, um, to solve this, if you take this to the other side, we're going to have marginal benefit equals marginal cost, the golden rule of economics. That's just taking the first order condition. Now, doing the comparative statics is going to involve rotating the graph to see what happens when we change an exogenous variable. So what is comparative statics? Clearly, um, I need to define this clearly. Comparative statics is when is figuring out what happens to your optimal choice, A, that's A star, what happens to the optimal choice when one of your exogenous variables changes. So it's a thought experiment to predict what's going to happen in the future. So we're going to see what happens when market conditions deteriorate. And I always do this in three steps. So I'll set up a table. Um, and the first step of this is to see what happens when we change our exogenous variable in the way we expect. So we have a decrease in M um, in this exogenous variable market conditions. So what we're going to do is we want to see how does that change our first order condition. And to do this, we need to go over to our graphs and think through how it might change these graphs. And usually it's going to rotate the graphs. In this case, it will rotate the one of the graphs. So probability of getting a job is going to rotate down when the market conditions went southward because of COVID, we had the probability of getting a job for any number of applications went down. It rotated down. So that's what happened. Now, what happened when we did that to the marginal benefit? Well, we need to check. So this was our optimal um, number of applications we were applying for in 2019. And we can look at the marginal benefit, which is the tangent there, and compare that to the marginal benefit in 2020, so 2019, and we see that the marginal benefit has gone down. So when I look at this component of the objective function, that has gone down. And of course, effort is not going to be affected by the market conditions, so nothing, um, nothing happens to the marginal cost. Now, if the marginal benefit went, if, if we were in equilibrium, so A star was determined such that this was set equal to zero. Suddenly, the marginal benefit has dropped, but nothing's happened to the marginal cost. That means this entire equation is less than zero. And let's see if we can see that when we look at our full model. All right, well, I didn't do a great job of drawing this, but we see the rotation downward in the probability of finding a job. And the new um, subtraction of benefit minus cost is this function here, so it might look something like this. And if we're at our A star old, that might um, have a negative slope, which is what we predicted over here. So we're no longer in equilibrium, we need to fix things. So our next line of our comparative statics is going to be asking the question, how do we counterbalance this offset to get us back to zero for the first order condition? So we're just asking ourselves, what do we need to do to these graphs, on these graphs, to the marginal benefit or marginal cost to counteract this drop in marginal benefit. And we have two options. Either we can increase the marginal benefit or we can decrease the marginal cost. Either of those things would achieve what we want to achieve. All right, now our final line on our comparative statics is what change do we need in the choice variable to achieve the counterbalance? So in this line, all we can do is move along these curves, back and forth along the curve. So, um, I want to know, okay, how can I increase the marginal benefit? And to do that, I come over here and I say, okay, if I increase the number of applications, the marginal benefit gets smaller or flatter. The slope gets smaller in magnitude. If I decrease the number of applications, moving along this line in this direction, the slope of the tangent gets larger. So a decrease in A is going to increase the marginal benefit. We can see that at a very low value of A, there's a high marginal benefit of filling out a job application. And then we do the same thing over here. For our marginal cost, we saw that we could counterbalance this offset by decreasing the marginal cost. Well, how do we do that? 
we could increase a. Well, I'm seeing when I increase a on that graph, that increases the slope of the tangent. It increases the marginal cost. When I decrease a by moving in this direction, that decreases the tangent, decreases the marginal cost, which is what we're trying to achieve. So both of these go in the same direction. They don't always go in the same direction, but in this case they do. Um, in this case, the result of this model, the comparative statics, uh, is the result of the model is a decrease in the market conditions for um, the probability of getting a job, leads to a decrease in the applications that seniors will fill out to apply for a job. So that would support this positive elasticity. It's positive because the two are going in the same direction. If you flip them, they'd be both going up. Positive elasticity is supported by this particular model. And um, we might see this in the data. We might see that a lot of people, instead of applying for jobs, are applying for grad school or are looking for some other alternative besides it being at work. So this might actually happen. But other people might have a different intuition. Some people may say, actually, I predict that with the market conditions going down, people will apply for more jobs. And the story there is slightly different. The story that we've just explored through this model is basically the story of every application you apply to is less likely to result in a job, so it's less worth the effort. That's the situation we just modeled. We might tell a different story where someone's really worried about not getting a job, so they increase their applications and increase their effort into getting a job, in which case you're going to see the opposite elasticity. And in which case, if you believe this to be the truth, or if you see data that supports this, then you're going to have to start from scratch again and come up with a different model that captures inherently what's going on in people's hearts. Um, and I should say, it could be that both models are right, it's just a matter of figuring out in which situation do which models apply. So maybe this positive elasticity situation, the one we just modeled, maybe that makes most sense for people with a strong alternative to getting a job, such as grad school or uh, caring for an elderly parent or something else that's a meaningful opportunity to take advantage of um, when you graduate. Whereas other populations without those opportunities might see a different um, pattern, in which case we need a model that's going to capture what's going on for that population. So let's do that. Let's come up with a different model and do the comparative statics on that.